Hey AP, in this video we're going to be talking about how we convert binary, hexamal, and decimal um, to one another. So in some ways this is review from the beginning of this semester, uh, and in another way, in another way, in another way, <laughs> it is uh, new stuff. So let's get right down to it. This isn't that complicated of a process. Uh, I'm going to show you a simple way to do it. It does maybe take a little bit longer, uh, but it's reliable and um, simple to understand. So here we go. Um, we've learned about two number systems as of this year. Uh, number systems are composed of two fundamental things, place and value. Keep that in mind as we move forward. So far we've learned about decimal, which is the base 10 system, and you've been using that since grade school. The possible values or symbols that we can use in the base 10 system are 0 through 9. Each place can ha or has a value of uh, 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, all the way up to infinity, 10 to the infinity, right? So we can represent any value with the decimal system that we want to. We've also learned about the binary system, and that's the base 2 system that computers and all digital devices use. The possible values we can use are 0 and 1. Each place has a value of 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, all the way up to infinity. So we can represent any value, uh, or excuse me, any quantity really is probably the best way to say it um, with the binary system. That's why it's so powerful. And it's easy to interpret by computers because it's only zeros and ones. We typically express binary in terms of bytes. That's eight bits together. An example of a byte is right there. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. In decimal, that would be 64 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1, which would be 75. Another system common in the world of technology is hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is the base 16 system. We typically see it uh, on, well not typically, there's lots of places we can see hexadecimal. Um, one of the most common places you see it is in a MAC address, which is the physical address that's assigned to every digital device on the planet. Um, and uh, you can look on the back of maybe um, your computer or something like that where the serial number would be and you might be able to find the MAC address. It's also in like your computer system settings. Um, you can look for it there. Either way, the hexadecimal system consists of uh, 16 possible values, 0 through the letter F. The values A through F are equivalent to 10 through 15 if you're thinking about a, a sort of dec more decimal oriented way of thinking about it, then A through F essentially represent 10 through 15. The places in the hexadecimal system are 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1, which is 16, 16 to the 2, which is 256, etc. So if you kind of think about that and work it out in your head all the way up to infinity, with the MAC, or excuse me, with the MAC, with the hexadecimal system, we can represent a larger number of values with a smaller set of, or a larger number of quantities with a smaller set of places and values. For example, the value FF is equal to 255. So we're only using two places and two values there. We can get 255. That's FF, where 16 to the 0 times 15 plus 16 to the 1 times 15 is 1 times 15 plus 16 times 15. That's 15 plus 240. That gives us 255. Here is a quick chart. You will want to have this either written down or at least have it in your head when you're taking the exam for doing these conversions. Now, we're going to look at a number in three systems, 128. So in decimal, it's pretty straightforward. You've seen the number 128 before. There's our decimal system. I'm doing everything in sort of byte format because that makes it easy. So in byte format, we've got places all the way up to 10 to the 7, but in this case, we only need the first three places of the decimal system to represent 128, the hundreds place, the tens place, and the ones place. In binary, that same value looks like this. Now we need a full byte to represent 128. 2 to the 7 is set to 1 or on, therefore it's our 128. And then we don't need any of the other binary values to be set to 1. 2 to the 7 represents um, 128 when it's turned on. And then in hex, the same number looks like this. Let's break down exactly why hex is or hex 80. We shouldn't say 80, by the way. Don't say hex 80 because you're going to get conv convinced that that's decimal. This is hex 80. How does that represent 128? It looks like this. 
In decimal, it's pretty straightforward. You've seen this since you were a kid. In binary, it's two to the seven times one plus where everything else is zero, we're just multiplying by zero, so it becomes zero. So that's 128 times one. In hex, it looks like this. 16 to the one times eight plus 16 to the zero times zero. So 16 times eight is 10 times eight plus eight times six, right? So 10 times eight is 80. 8 times 6 is 48, 80 plus 48 is 128, or you can just say 16 times 8 if you don't break things out like I do. All right, now, performing conversion, right? It's going to seem intimidating at first. There's a lot to think of here, you're thinking. Um, hmm, that's a bit redundant, but I'm going to show you a really easy method. Okay, it takes, a, like I said, it takes a little bit more time sometimes, but it is reliable and simple. This method revolves around binary as our foundational system, meaning that the first goal if we don't have binary, it's to get to binary and then work from there. So let's look at this first problem. We're going to convert decimal 72 to hexadecimal. First, we're going to get the binary version of decimal 72. All right, we throw our chart up. This can help us out if you want to put this on some scratch paper or whatever um, and you know, build yourself a little cheat sheet. This is the good place to start. All right, there's the binary for 72. We've got 2 to the 6 set to 1. That's going to give us 64. Then we've got 2 to the 3 set to 1. That'll give us 8. That's 72. 64 plus 8 is 72. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this binary and we're going to split it right down the middle. Okay, we're splitting this byte down the middle. So what happens when we split it down the middle is that we are going to convert the values to the left here to... 2 to the 3, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2. So it's almost like we've got two sets of binary here. Okay. Notice that my values below um, each place also changed. All right. Now, um, the 4 or the 2 to the 2 on the left is on. It's, it's set to 1. So that's worth 4. And then on the right, the 2 to the 3 is on, and that's uh, 8. Right, So this is an, a really important step to getting the hexadecimal because if you think about it, look at the two sides of this byte that we've split in two. What do each of these, uh, what would be the maximum value that you could get out of each of these sides? Think about that for a second. Okay. The answer is 15. So if we add 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 on each side, that's 15. Now think back to hexadecimal right? You've got values 0 through 15 or 0 through F. That's pretty handy. Now we can calculate the hex values from this split binary or this split byte and we can solve the rest of the problem. So 2 to the 2 times 1 is 4. 2 to the 3 times 1 is 8. That means that this decimal 72 is ultimately hexadecimal 48. Remember, don't say 48, say 48. Okay? And if we do the math, there we go. We could also say that hexadecimal 48 is equivalent to binary 01001000. Again, this is not decimal 48. It is hexadecimal 48. If we built the same chart, it would look like this. I've got that leading zero on there just to help you understand it. If this is still clear as mud, let's do another problem. Let's convert decimal 183 to hexadecimal. So we're going to get some letters in here, I already know. First, we'll get the binary of 183. Follow the same process. We get the binary. I'm not going to sit here and do the math with you for that one. You can take a moment and figure it out. Then we're going to split the binary. I leave it in place, and then I'm going to switch it up right there. And now I've split it, right? So I've got two half bytes, if you want to think about it that way. Two, I got two half bytes on each side. Each side has a maximum value of 15. Now I'm going to calculate my hex values and solve. So first, I'll calculate on the left here. I get 2 to the 3 times 1 plus 2 to the 2 times 0 plus 2 to the 1 times 1 plus 2 to the 0 times 1. That gives me 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1. That's 11. Okay, now if we think back to our little chart in the beginning, um, if 10 is A, then 11 is is B. So the value for 11 in hex is B. Now we'll do the other side. We'll get 7 after this. 
The value for 7 in hex is just 7. It doesn't need a special character to represent it. And so this 183 in decimal is B7 in hexadecimal. Again, we can throw up our little math for ourselves. 16 times, uh, 16 to the 1 times 11, which is B in this case, is 176. So we get 176 plus 7, that's 183. And again, I'll just throw up the chart. There's the conversion in that form. Okay, no leading zero that time. I want you to try. With this one, we're going to do hexadecimal AF to binary. So you're going to reverse the process. I want you to try to do this one on your own and then turn that binary value into decimal. If you can do this on your own, you're probably ready to go. I hope that you were successful in getting this, but if you're not, that's okay. I'm going to give you plenty of practice. Now, let's take hex AF and look at it in the split binary form. So, on the left, I've got A. On the right, I've got F. I've got my binary or my byte split in two here. First, I'm going to uh, turn A into binary. That's going to be 1010, right? That's 10, or A is 10, right? So it's going to be 1010 on my left split. F is 15, so I'm going to plug that in. That's all ones. Easy peasy. So now, I've got the binary, right? Really, I've got the binary right there in front of me, but I'll go ahead and set the byte back to normal. Notice that all my values have switched back to the base 2 system. I don't know why I've got an S in there. Ignore that. Um, but now we can just take that and extrapolate the binary. So the binary is 10101111. That's equivalent to AF in hex. Now, we want to take this binary and turn it into decimal. Pretty straightforward process. I'm just going to add up what's on. Right? I'll add up what's set to 1. And that's going to be 175. So AF is 175 in decimal. AF is 10101111 in binary. That's hexadecimal and binary and decimal conversion. It's as simple as that. I'm going to assign you some practice work so that you can get this down. You're welcome to ask me questions. The other thing that's included in that practice is a note about what happens when you don't have a number that sort of perfectly fits into a binary byte. Well, the answer is this, and I'm just going to, I didn't actually include this in the lecture, and I'm sorry, but I'll just explain it right now. So oh, let me go over to the number system document here. Okay. So let's take a look at this. All right. Let's say you have a number like 10101001011. So if we were to look at this, this isn't a, a proper like set of bytes. This is actually a byte. I can highlight it there. So it's a byte, right? There's my eight bits plus a half byte. So it's kind of weird, all right? Well, what do I do when I have that situation? The simple answer is we just add some leading zeros until it becomes a set of two bytes. Always try to go back to working with bytes. Don't try to work with things that aren't bytes. That's why literally every digital device is in, you know, we think about storage or transfer rate, all this kind of stuff in terms of bytes. We don't think about it in terms of like, half bytes or anything. I forget what you even call it. It's like a uh, chomp or something like that. <laughs> when it's a half byte, it's irrelevant. Okay, so this, for example, this binary right here would become this guy, right? But we also have to respect the number system, okay? Just because we start a new byte doesn't mean we start at 2 to the 0 again. This right here, if this is 2 to the 7th, then this guy is 2 to the 8th, and then this is 2 to the 9th, 2 to the 10. Okay, so this is 256 and this is 1024. This right here is 512. It's not on, so it's not relevant. So to turn that into decimal, we would say 1024, this guy right here, this guy, plus 256, plus 128, 16, so on and so forth until we get to 1427. And then as hex, this is actually much easier. We can just like split it again and we can easily see that the 4 and the 1 in our split byte okay, are um, 5. And then we split this by 2, and we've got um, 8 and 1. That gives us 9, and then this is 2 and 1, and that's 3. So when you think about it in decimal terms, you've got to think about it all the way up to you know, 2 to the whatever. But when it comes to converting it back to hex, you're still, you're still splitting that byte the same way that you did before. That's all I've got for decimal to hex to binary conversion. 
um, definitely do this exercise and prepare yourself for the exam. So these questions will be easy peasy.